From Boise to Middleton, the 5A and 4A Southern Idaho Conferences feature 20 of the largest schools in Idaho. Highlighting the big plays and big stories from Idaho's biggest schools, this is the SIC PrepCast with Wayne DeZubak. That's right. Welcome in. It's another edition of the SIC PrepCast on IdahoSports.com. Breaking down everything 5A, 4A ranks in District 3 in the state of Idaho. Brandon Bainey is always joined by Wayne DeZubak. Wayne, what's going on? Uh, not much. I tell you what, we've got a lot of basketball to talk about, things happening, you know, getting ready to rock and roll, getting ready for Squirrel State next week. So, um, you know, really, I say nothing, but really there's a lot of stuff going on. But we have some things put into place that we'll talk about, especially in 5A girls. We know who the district, you know, who's going to be in for the district championship on Friday night. Uh, we know a couple of teams that are headed to the state. So uh, we'll get to all of that. Yeah, and we'll we'll start there. We'll we'll start with girls districts because that's kind of the hot that's the hot story right now because we have actual postseason basketball going on. Not that there's not some compelling boys basketball matchups, but because of the way Idaho does things, where they split it up now, uh, the boys get the thunder stolen a little bit by the postseason girls. So yeah, they do. Yeah, let's so let's t- take a look at the uh, the five A bracket. And again, if you're watching the video version of this podcast, you can do that at the IdahoSports.com YouTube channel as well as our Facebook page, audio only, also an option at idahosports.com or wherever you download your podcasts. Uh, if you're watching the video, I'm going to share my screen here, and that will allow you to see the bracket for the, for the 5A SIC girls. Now, if you're listening audio only and you're like, oh, man, I want to see the bracket, it's super easy. All you have to do is go to idahosports.com right on, on the homepage. First thing you're going to see is here's a link to all the district brackets, and you can just click on the bracket and follow along that way as well so it's a really nice resource to have but man it's it's a lot of work on the back end wayne let me tell you oh yeah i can i can imagine it changes all the time too so yeah no doubt okay so here is the 5a sic girls bracket and again if you are watching the video version of this you'll want to make your screen uh full screen so it's a little easier to to read what's going on we last week were able to talk about the play-in games uh and again awaii rocky mountain meridian Mountain View, or excuse me, a Centennial won those play-in games. The one upset was Centennial over Mountain View, a nine over an eight. But when we got to the to the actual opening round at districts, things pretty much went chalk, Wayne. You had number one Timberline over Centennial, 64-43. Number four Eagle over Hawaii in the 4-5, 58-40. Uh, I, was, I, I was a little surprised at the bottom half of the bracket. Number two Boise and number three Bora got pushed a little bit. Number two Boise. Uh, defeated Meridian 49-40, and Bora defeated Rocky Mountain 37-30. But mm-hmm. uh, both Rocky and Meridian gave these these powers a, a test in the opening round. Yeah, they did. I mean, but you know what? The bottom line is the top four seeds, as expected. I mean, the one area that I was worried about or didn't know was that, you know, you had Eagle and Hawaii, there were four and five seeds right there. But I thought it would be the top four, and it was indeed right down the wire. So, you know, you get Timberline in there, Boise in there, and uh, Bora in there. And then, of course, uh, you know, you got Eagle in there as the four seed. So that kind of went – I think what surprised me was that the next level, the semifinal games were not even competitive. Yeah, in, in those two semifinals, again, it was all chalk. Number one, Timberline over number four, Eagle, 46 to 19. And then, oh, yeah. and then this is the one that really surprised me. Number two, Boise over number three, Bora, 48 to 30, because those two had been kind of nipping and clawing at each other all year. Um, and I was, I was really surprised, but here it is clearly the two best teams. Number one, Timberline, number two, Boise in the district championship game that will be on the 11th. So that's Friday that's night. Right. That's Friday night. Yep. This Friday. Yep. Well, well, what really surprised me, to be honest with you, is in that uh, that uh, Timberline Eagle game. You know, Eagle had lost to Timberline twice during the regular season, but both games, Brandon, were by seven points. I think it was 50, 55 to 48 and 37, 39 to 32. So both games were seven point games. And I tell you what, Timberline just said, ah, oh, not going to happen a third time. We're going to get you in where we can get you from the start. And they did. It was, uh, I think there were single digits at halftime, uh, Eagle was, and then it ended up, like you said, 46 to 19. It was all Timberline, Timberline looking very much like the number one team. And now you take that loss to Coeur d'Alene, and on either side of that loss, Timberline has 11 and 0 runs. So they're 11 and 0 to start the year, lost to Coeur d'Alene, and have now gone 11 and 0. So they are 22 and 1 on the year. 
and they looked the part. And then Boise looked the part against Bora. Now, to the point, Bora could not score. I think Bora will finally get to state. I think they're going to win their game tonight against Hawaii. They'll get to state. But, boy, they could not hit. They could not throw the ball in an ocean. Uh, that's what kind of happened. That's why they that Boise just kept building that lead on them. And then Bora just kind of nobody wanted to take a shot. Once nobody could score, nobody wanted to take the shot. And this is where I think a shot clock would have helped Bora because it would have forced them to shoot. But what they did was they held the ball for 50 seconds, a minute, each possession, and didn't find a shot. So it I was a little surprised that both semifinals were as lopsided as they were. Yeah, I was going to ask you, since, since you saw uh, Boise play Bora, uh, we've talked all year about Banks, the center down low, 6'3", for, for Boise. And I, I think she is the one true difference maker simply because in terms of pure size, no other team in the 5A field can match her. And so we talked about her her development as the season has gone along. How is she looking uh, as we are in the late stages of postseason play? Well, she looks fantastic, but so does Sophia Glancy for uh, Timberline. Those two both had good games, obviously different games. They get to play each other again on Friday night. The last time they played, we did that game as well on idosports.com, and Banks got into foul trouble early with three early fouls, had to sit the bench in the first half, then most of the second half because she ended up falling out of that game. So we didn't get a true sense for what Banks versus Glancy could do. But you're right. Uh, Boise just feeds the ball down low to Banks. She puts it in. Same thing with Timberline. Difference between those two teams, Boise and Timberline, Timberline has a much better supporting cast. They've got more people that can really feed the ball to Glancy, get it done. Uh, Boise, they still have good players, but not as many. So they're deeper on Timberline, and I think that's what's been the difference in the first two games this year where Timberline has beaten Boise twice. Sure. And I should mention, I think Lancey is like 6'2". So She's 6'2", yeah. Yeah, not not far off from Banks, but that's... Well, and and Glancy, and I say this in the kindest way, has got that tight end look. I mean, she's really, she is, she's really built. I mean, she is strong. If you want to be an athlete and you want to play women's basketball, uh, built like Sophia Glancy, 6'2", and she is powerful. She can get you, she can bounce you out of there, get protect down low. She can block you out. She can set screens. She does everything. Yeah, the district championship, Timberline, Boise, top two teams. Friday night, <clears throat> excuse me, Friday night, 7 o'clock, Capitol High School. Uh, Wayne, you will have the coverage on idahosports.com for an audio-only broadcast of that championship battle. It should be a good one. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. i got three games this week. Tonight, I've got Hawaii at Mountain View, which I think should be a good game. I think Mountain View is playing better ball. We'll talk about that. That's the boys' side. And then Thursday night, I've got – uh, Timberline boys hosting Meridian. I think that should be another good game. But Friday night, you got the district championship game. Both those gals are going to state, and or both those teams are going to state. Uh, but they've got some, you know, Boise especially wants to at least uh, knock Timberline out if they can. So there, there's going to be some uh, chip on the shoulder playing on Friday night. It'd be fun to watch. No doubt. Okay, so that was the easy side of the bracket. Now we get into the, the consolation side where uh, it doesn't look like your typical bracket because there's four and a half bids to state. So there's no, there's no need to play all the way through to a third place game because third right. and fourth automatically get to go and fifth place gets to go to a play in game. So we did have a couple of loser out games uh, and it was all chalk there as well. Uh, a why he, the five seed defeated Centennial 64, 46 Rocky mountain, the six seed defeated Meridian 67 to 49. And so now they will play uh, tonight in mm-hmm. Bora loser out game. Well, it's not loser out, but but it's consolation bracket games. Um, Bora will play Hawaii. Bora lost in the semifinals. Hawaii were working their way through the consolation bracket. And then Rocky Mountain will play Eagle. The winners of those respective games tonight will clinch the third and fourth bids to state. So let's just assume Chalk wins. And I'm not saying that's going to happen, but it's easy for our purposes. So let's say Bora beats Hawaii. Eagle beats Rocky Mountain. Okay, Bora and Eagle automatically get to go to state. And then the two losers, Awaihi and Rocky Mountain, will play uh, Thursday night at Bora High School in basically a, a game to decide who goes to the state play-in. It's, it's fifth and sixth place, essentially, between the two losers tonight. Yep, that's right. And those guys that lose tonight playing that, uh, go for the play-in game on Thursday. As you said, the play-in game will be Saturday of this week. So bottom line is, I, I agree with you. I think Bora and Eagle are going to get victories. Uh, I mean, I, I really think they are. I think they're going to join Boise and Timberline 
from the 5A ranks over here at State next week. So I think that's how it's going to go, how it's going to play out. Uh, I was pretty good getting the top four seeds in there last week when we talked on there. So I, I think pretty comfortable that Bora and Eagle should win. Bora, they, they, I mean, from a talent standpoint, Bora and Eagle have it over the two teams are playing tonight. Uh, and then after that, you know, it's anybody's guess as to who will play in that playing game. But as we've talked, uh, that playing game is against uh, somebody from up north, and that's going to be tough to win. Yeah, and let me ask you if it, if it does come down to Hawaii and Rocky Mountain for for that spot to get to the state play in, who who wins that game? I think I think Hawaii does. I like Hawaii. I think they've been there all year. They've been right on the cusp of, of having you know an above five hundred season. And so I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go with them. Uh, it just, it's, it'll be interesting to see, you know, again, what, what I saw in the semifinals was I saw two teams dominate. I saw Timberline dominate their game, Boise dominate their game. And now Bora and Eagle both have to just kind of rebound, get back in the thing and realize, Hey, we still got a chance to go to state and our best chance is to win Tuesday night. Yeah. And that would be a big feather in the cap for a first year, a program with coach Jordan Axe, uh, oh, because, because they're a new school, they're pretty young. They only have one senior on the roster. So be yeah, good absolutely. Coach. They're a lot like the guys, except the guys are, are really, you know, really just tearing it up right now. So uh, yes. but the gals are there too. I mean, I'm very impressed with both basketball programs at a the storm looking good in their first year. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Rocky Mountain and Hawaii played once this year. It was on January 8th, and the Storm got out of there with a 49-46 to 46 win. So we'll see what the rematch has in store. Could be a could be a pretty good one. If that um, is the rematch. So you know. Right, if if that is the rematch, right. Anything can happen like this time. Say chalk holes tonight. <laughs> yes, um, and, and that's a, a good reminder that as fans are listening to this, we're recording this on Tuesday afternoon, those those – consolation games or Tuesday night. Uh, the games may have already gone final by the time yep. you're, you're listening to this. In that case, uh, you should go to idahosports.com. Really, I go there first thing in the morning, check the latest scores, the brackets, updated schedules, all that good stuff. And one of two things will happen. We will either look really smart or we'll look at the dumbest two guys in the world. <laughs> well, uh, next to me, you're always going to look uh, smarter. You're, I don't know, man. We're on the same page with who we think is going to win tonight. So I think you know, we're, we're kind of we, we kind of both throwing our lots in the same corner. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, for sure. So that's a look at the 5A girls. Uh, 4A girls, you're thinking, oh, man, their district action must be heating up, too. Well, eh, not really. <laughs> Still yeah. haven't really haven't got it started yet. They are always uh, the last, at least in that area, the last league to get it going because they're in an eight team conference and they all play 14 conference games. But it's it's all uh, locked in at least, and so we can at least show you the matchups, and at least start talking about what what we think might happen. There's no official results yet from this, so um, no surprises. Middleton and Bishop Kelly, the top two seeds, with Columbia just a step behind. But again, here's a look at the uh, the bracket. If you look here, and I guess I guess I should uh, clarify that. Uh, the the games that will determine who can move on to state take place tonight. We had the opening round on Saturday, um, yeah. and there wasn't there wasn't anything super surprising. It was all chalk. Number one, Middleton defeats uh, number eight Caldwell seventy one seventeen. Number four, Emmett over number five Nampa fifty one forty six. Number two, Bishop Kelly over number seven Ridgeview sixty two to eighteen. And number three, Columbia over number six Valley View forty five. 29 so so now we have the games where if you win tonight wayne on that winner's side you you know you're going to state well and 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 unlike the 5a district where they have a site you know like for instance tonight's games are at capitol high school okay and and at bora high school these games tonight for 4a are at the home of the highest seat uh, so, or lowest seed. I always get that mixed up. Is it high seed or low seed? But the number one seed is Milton, so they get to host Emma tonight. The number two seed is BK. They get to host Columbia. So you're now playing, you know, it's not like you're on a neutral court. Not that it might make that much difference with these two teams, because I think we're headed to a Middleton BK championship game Thursday night. But the bottom line is it gets even tougher because now if you're Emmett, guess what? You got to play at Middleton tonight. Yeah, and Emmett was really pushed by Nampa. Uh, that was a game I thought maybe Nampa could get. They ended up losing uh, 51-46. That's a five-point loss. 
Uh, Nampa will play Caldwell in a loser out game tonight, and Valley View will host Ridgeview. We'll see who has the better view as they continue their season in the consolation bracket. Uh, and you get losers year. tonight, and those two games you just mentioned are out, so you're done. Your season's yes. over, so a lot on the line. Yeah, uh, I, I think Middleton has an easy time with Emmett. Um, maybe Bishop Kelly in Columbia, maybe Wayne, but I just, I'm having a hard time seeing it, but I, I don't know. Columbia has looked good at times this year. Yeah. But the BK women have two losses, both in Middleton. And I think, I think they're not going to get a third loss tonight. I think they're going to take it. And I think we're going to see Middleton and BK as expected. And with those wins tonight, they would both uh, advance the state, which is really the way it should be. They've been the best teams all year long. And they should win tonight, advance to state, and then they'll duke it out for the district title, which really is more for bragging rights than it is for anything because the real fun starts next week. Definitely. And I think that I really do think that that, that last spot, because the third place team will get to play uh, a, a state play in game against the second place team from District Six over in the East. So there's a lot to play for still if you're on that consolation side. I really do think it's going to come down to if we if we assume Bishop Kelly is going to beat Columbia tonight, I think whoever wins that Columbia Nampa loser out game right away, I think will will go through and get the consolation crown. Yeah, I, I think so too. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens because uh, you, as you mentioned, you think that they you know a little better ball right here. So on the girls' side, so yeah, that that state playing game would be uh, Saturday at Burley. And more than likely, it's going to be against Skyline. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Skyline's best player uh, out for the entire season due to a soccer injury. She, she had a pretty bad knee injury. Um, yeah. So they just haven't been the same team without Well, her. it's the same thing like Mountain View girls. I mean, they had the problem right off the get-go, uh, and, and they've had that problem all year long. They never could, and they got knocked out in the first round. So the two-time defending state champs, Mountain View, not going to be around in 2022. But, uh, again, injuries. And in basketball, man, you just can't make up an injury to a, or your top player, top or especially if you get a couple with your top two players, uh, you're, you're kind of toast. Yeah, no doubt. Um, okay, let's move to boys basketball. We'll stay on the 4A side because the, the big matchup uh, that happened l- last week was Middleton hosting Bishop Kelly, the two the two top dogs in the 4A SIC. Middleton won by five the first time they doubled it. They won by 10 in the rematch, 61-51. I guess there's no doubt who the top dog in this league is. Yeah, Middleton, I mean, they're 16 and 1 overall. They're only losses to Eagle. We know where Eagle sits. Eagle sits atop the 5A boys at 14 and 1, 17 and 2 overall. So, I mean, losing that one game to Eagle, and that was early on in the season. And really, I think Middleton might even actually give Eagle a better game than what they gave him the last time because Middleton has really improved. They had some young kids at the time that were just going into their junior year and stuff like that. I'm talking about Michael Day, and he's gotten so much better in this junior season now. He's a much better player today than he was uh, a couple of months ago. But, yeah, Middleton 11-0 in league play, BK 9-2. and uh, Again, just like the gals, it's those two. It's the Knights, you know, and it's the Vikings. It just it, you know, sounds like something from an old war somewhere, you know, the Knights and the Vikings. <laughs> yeah, right? A, a, a medieval battle. Middle, yeah, exactly. For sure. So those two are pretty much locked into the top two spots in terms of district seedings, and nobody can catch them. Middleton eleven and zero, Bishop Kelly nine and two, Nampa is a full five games behind Middleton, yeah. and and three games behind Bishop Kelly. So even if N- Nampa won out, I mean, it, it would be really hard. It's not impossible, but though those top two spots are pretty much locked in. Um, Nampa and Valley View right now fighting for third and fourth. Nampa's six and five. Valley View is six and six. I can't I can't figure out this Nampa team, Wayne. It's like sometimes they look awesome and other times they leave me scratching my head a little bit. Um, they've had some really nice wins, uh, particularly over Valley View, 49, 48. Um, but but then like they lost to Emmett and they lost to Columbia. And yeah. this is a team that I saw in person at the Preston Indians Classic. And they don't have much size, but they are very well coached with Brad Adolphson, the former Weezer coach in his first year there at Nampa. 
Yeah, all of that is true, what you just said. And I mean, the problem is, I always think it is, because we said the same thing about the Napa football team. They were my dark horse in football. And one week they looked great. The next week they lost to somebody they shouldn't have. The next week they beat somebody they shouldn't have. They just kept doing this all the time. I don't know if it's a mental thing, because I think they've got the players to get the job done. I don't know if they just have that total belief in, in their program and, you know, and what they're doing. But anyway... They've got to believe in the process and make it happen. And yeah, they could shake something up. But, you know, Middleton, BK, Napa, and Valley View, the only ones that are 500 or above in that league and the SIC 4A. So, I mean, that's, that tells yeah. you kind of how the hats. Yes. And, and the race for third place is important because that puts you away from Middleton. Uh, not that BK is a walk in the park, but I'd, ra I'd rather take my chances with yeah. BK than, than Middleton, certainly. Um, Absolutely, and and right now Napa has the edge because they swept Valley View. Uh, they won both matchups with the Falcons this year, which was absolutely critical. Um, but they can't afford to have any more bad losses. No, um, no, they got they got to put it together right now. Now it's it's showtime, you know, because their season ends, you know, next week they're done, and then they get into their districts and stuff like that. So I mean, yep. Five uh, A S I C again. We're kind of see seeing these tiers develop, right? Uh, you've, you've got a pretty clear top two Eagle 14 and one in the conference, a why 13 and one. Then in the second tier, I would kind of bunch and tell me, tell me where you would maybe adjust these tiers, Wayne. I've got Eagle and a why in the top tier. Would you add anybody to that? No. Okay. No, um, no. They, they, they are, they are standing alone by themselves. They really are. As the old joke goes right now, they are outstanding in their field. They really are. <laughs> Yes. In, in the second tier, I only have two teams. I have Meridian and Mountain View. Meridian's 11 and three. Mountain View is 10 and four. Centennial has had a nice year. They're nine and five in the conference, but I just, I just don't think that to me, they're not in that second tier yet. They're at the top of that third tier. But what do you think? Well, what's happening right now is Centennial and Timberline, both inconsistency. Okay. Uh, one week, you know, they look better than the next week, but they're just not right there. And that's why Centennial's nine and five, Timberline's eight and six. Uh, they're just that inconsistency right there. And I keep thinking, man, they're going to do it. Meridian, somehow, despite the fact they lost eight players from last year and, you know, all the stuff that they lost, the player of the year in Roberry, the whole bit, they hang in there at 11 and three. However, they're 12 and seven overall, but 11 and three, um, they're hanging right there. They keep making adjustments, bringing kids up from the JB and doing stuff. So, and Mountain View, just when I think they're out of it, they come up with a big win. So I'm really excited as we speak. I get to do Mountain View hosting tonight, a senior night at Mountain View. They are hosting Oahe. I don't think anybody here in this valley right now with the possibility of Eagle can stop Oahe. But I'm not going to discount the fact that Mountain View may not shock the 5 ASIC tonight by upsetting Hawaii. However, that being said, I'm telling you, Hawaii is awfully good. You talk about supporting cast up and down that roster. They've got good people that are supporting the others. Yeah, um, it, that is going to be a really fun game tonight. Um, and I do. I, I think there's the the clear top four. I To me, like you said, Centennial and Timberline are just a little too inconsistent right now um, to, to make a challenge for that second tier in my mind. So I've got them in, in the third tier uh, in the fourth tier. I've got what I'm, what I'm calling the, uh, the, the, the streaky shooters. Cause you've got Rocky mountain at six and eight Bora at six and 10. When we did the preseason coaches poll, Wayne Bora was picked to finish dead last. It's because they lost everybody to graduation and their best returning player uh, and their only returning starter, Ray Bergerson, moved to Washington. So, yep. uh, so they lost everybody, um, and they had a lot of question marks surrounding their team, but here they are. They've won four in a row. They have, but the two games that I have done, to be perfectly honest, Bora has not looked good. You know, they really haven't. And when I keep seeing they've won their four in a row now, I'm like going, huh, that's not the Bora team I saw. But you know what? They they do such a good job. They're good. They're well coached. And you're right. You know, when Ray Ray Bergerson left, when Ray Ray said bye bye, you know, it really left a hole there because he was a great outside shooter. Uh, his dad, Roberto Bergerson, played for Boise State, played, you know, many years in the uh, CBA. And, uh, those guys. Anyway, not to belabor that point, but he was a good player. So, yeah, they had a lot of work to do. But 
I'm surprised that they've won four in a row, to be honest with you. I'm happy for them, but I'm surprised that they have because I've seen them twice, and both times I've seen them, they've not looked that good. Well, I'll tell you, Wayne, they've very nearly won six in a row because prior to the four-game winning streak, uh, they lost to Rocky Mountain 44-42, uh, mm-hmm. and that was, that was a game in overtime. And and they lost to Timberline 29-26. So you're talking about two one-possession losses uh, away from a six-game winning streak, which were really, uh, would really cause a shakeup in the standings. But. Well, I mean, so the thing of it is you can't – come district time, you can't sleep on them. You know, you've got the – again, we talked about the have and have-nots. Obviously, the haves are Eagle and Hawaii right now. And then you've got Meridian. You can throw them in there somewhere in between along with Mountain View. Then you got the guys that are just – Hey, like the little engine that could, we think we can, we think we can, we think we can. And that's where Bora is right now. They think they can. So they're starting to do it. So I wouldn't sleep on them no matter who I am. Yeah. Leading the way for Bora this year, a nice inside outside game. Their top two scores are Ryan Willoughby, the, uh, the six, five junior, and then Lance Anderson, the five, nine junior out front at the guard spot. So I like Willoughby. He plays a good game. He's got a big body, kind of blocks people out, does a good job. And, and they do, they have some, they have some good guys. Again, Bohr is one of those teams that if they can, if they shoot the ball, if they put the Brown thing in the round thing, uh, they can beat you. You know, they, they really can, but they do have trouble. Sometimes they go cold from the floor from time to time. Yep. And then uh, the last tier I've got is the, the tier of teams that um, are going to have a tough time in, in the play in games into districts. I think Skyview's four and 10, Kuhn is three and 11. Boise is two and 13. Capital is one and 15. If there was one of these teams that you had to, to stick your neck out on Wayne and say, yeah, they could win a play in game and maybe, you know, disrupt somebody at districts. Who do you got? I don't. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) How's that for confidence? Hey, that's all right. Hey, it's, uh, that's a good, it's answered no, D. It, would be, it would be Skyview. It would have to be Skyview. I think they've got some athletes, but I think Cuna is struggling right now. And uh, Capital 1 and 15 says it all. I mean, they are more than struggling. They're just trying to find their way completely. Uh, they'll, they've got some young people. They'll, they'll get better. But yeah, I think it's going to be hard. I, I, I really think those three teams are struggling for a reason. And, uh, and but I think so to give you your, your answer, I would say Skyview would probably be my pick, but for the most part, I would say I think I would probably put my money on the playing team from wherever it's coming from. Yeah. Uh, if I had to pick one, I would say CUNA because CUNA has, they've got a guy, Gavin Gordon, who's capable of going out and getting yep. you 30, 35 on a night if you need him to. And that's that's big. Though Those other teams at the bottom don't have a, a score of that caliber. So. I know, but what I've seen this year, I've seen the teams that have the supporting cast are doing well. They got a couple of good players. That's what I like about the Timber Timberline girls. I mean, they got Sophia Glancy down there, but they've got at least five other players that really you don't just watch out. They are something else. And Hawaii boys, I mean, they got Liam Campbell right now, who's leading score almost 20 points per game. But Campbell's got Jack Payne around him. The other day I did a game with the Y Heat. They started Jackson Rasmussen as a six seven freshman. He didn't start at the beginning of the year. I mean, he came off the bench. Now he's starting. So he's getting better. So they're they're starting, they start one senior, and that's Jack Payne. So their supporting cast is fantastic. Max Avedra was a starting guard at the beginning. He's lost that out to Sherburn. Sherburn has taken over for him. But when Max Avedra comes in, huh. Not only does he have crazy wild shoes like, you know, lemon lime green, stuff like that, and you know who he is right away, but the guy can play, and yet he's not starting. So that gives you an idea of how much talent they have up and down. Andy Harrington, he's doing a great job coaching, but you know what? He did a better job recruiting, you know, and that that makes his coaching job easier because he's got the players out there, and they're playing like a team. Yes. So really, and, and the same thing with Eagle. I, I don't want to just belabor this point, but Eagle's the maybe the best team team I've seen. There's not one stand out there. I mean, yeah, you got good guys, Gage Jones, you got Donovan Jones, both of those guys are good, but they are a team team, uh, consummate. And Cody Pickett's got them playing like that. And so when you play Eagle, you play all of Eagle. So that's kind of what I'm seeing this year. So when I see somebody like Cuna with one player that really can get it done on a given night and get hot. I go, okay, that's good, but okay, give him his points. Can, the other, can anybody else score? 
And that's why where I see the weaknesses. Yeah, and that was the biggest thing I saw with CUNA. They they also went to that Preston Indians classic that I was at. Yeah. And uh, the first game they won, Gavin Gordon scored 30. The next game, uh, Gordon struggled and nobody else really stepped Nobody up. else could pick up the slack, yeah. Yeah, so. All right, that's uh, a look at what's going on hoops-wise. Uh, next, next week, Wayne, we're going to be getting ready for girls' state basketball. I can't believe it. Yeah, it'll be fun. You'll be you get over here. Hopefully, I have some good weather for you. We've had an inversion, and it's been the same every day, day after day after day after day. And I'm like getting tired of it. <laughs> Is it a good? So it's not a good inversion. It's well, it's not a bad one. Like we've had worse ones, but it's just like 35, 36, 37 for a high, and then 19 for a low. You know, kind of hazy skies, and it's just like I want some weather. You know, a little rain, a little snow, a little wind blowing around, a little something going on to just shake things up. So. I hear you. Yeah. Well, if not, let's just jump to 70 degrees and be done with it. <laughs> I think we can all get on board with that for sure. So yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, who can grab those other bids uh, from the, from the four, a five ASIC ranks and girls basketball. And we'll, we'll break it all down next week for you again on the SIC prep cast uh, for Wayne to I'm Brandon Bainey. Thanks for listening everybody. We'll see you next time on IdahoSports.com.